This is going to be a really fun episode. If you've been following along, uh, you know that we've built out our first instance of our database with a scaffold, and uh, we have a little bit of functionality, but now we're going to start actually building out some navigation components so we can start getting around inside the app. And so let's uh, start up the server so we can see what stage we're at right now. And there we go. Preview port 3000, and this is where we're at. Now you notice that we have all of these links up here for navigation, but if you click them there, you don't do anything because we just pointed them right back to the root just for testing. So what we're gonna do in this episode is actually make all of these work, which will be really cool. So let's come over here and uh, we can get a, a stop the server and get out of the actual application. And the way that we're going to uh, create our navigation, or the way we're going to start doing it, is to type in Rails G controller, and the G stands for generate. And then we're going to call this controller welcome. And then we're going to give it an index page, an about page, a contact page, a back page, a pricing page, and let's we can take a look inside the actual application and see everything that we already have told it to expect so we can make sure we have it set up properly from day one. And so I'll open that up. We have home, which is the index page, about us, contact, okay, yeah, features. Facts, pricing, and uh, login. We don't have to worry about the login. We're, we're going to take care of that later. Um, so that's all you have to do. And now you just hit return. And it's going to create this uh, new controller for us. And you can see, if you pull up on the console, you can see it actually did quite a bit of, uh, of work. So uh, it created new routes. It created a number of new files and uh, it actually can created controllers for us as well. So to see those uh, we can just hit refresh right up here in the top right hand corner and if we click on views again now we can see that we actually have a full set of welcome views and we have each one of these items right here which is really cool and we'll uh, click out of this go into our routes file right here and you can see that we have all of these routes built in, which is really nice. And one thing that we can do, if you want to see what this looks like, is we're going to Rails S to get the server started again. And click Preview, Port 3000. And nothing's going to look different. These still aren't going to work because we haven't taught them what to do yet. But if we come up top and hit slash welcome slash pricing, now you can see it actually brings this welcome pricing in. And it says, find me in the app views welcome pricing html.erb file. If you're wondering what ERB stands for, it just stands for embedded Ruby. And so what it means, if you have a .erb file, you can actually put Ruby inside of that file, which is very important because so, that's how you actually call and communicate with the controller and do a lot of things that we'll be talking about. So this now works, which is fantastic. Now one thing you may be wondering about is you notice how invoices has resources and how you can get to multiple, if we come up here and go to invoices, you can actually get to multiple invoices or invoicing pages up here and we didn't have to have all of the rest of this content and uh, you may think that you could just take all this and dump it inside resources however it's not quite as cut and dry as that and the reason is because what invoices is doing it's utilizing a built-in feature in rails called resources and it works with something called RESTful Routes. 
And what all RESTful routes means is it has an integrated approach to routing for certain actions. So you can do edits, you can do deletes, you can do show and indexing and different things like that. Um, however, it doesn't work, or I should say it, it works differently when you have a lot of uh, unique things like about contact, fact, pricing, you know, things like that. These aren't really, uh, these aren't really functions as much as they're just static pages. So the way that I usually have my enterprise app set up is the dynamic things, the things like generating invoices, purchase orders, uh, sending out email alerts, you know, a lot of the things that we're going to be building in, uh, those usually have resources associated with them. Static pages, I just usually leave like this. Um, you can play around with it, see what works best for you, but this is the way that I like it. So now what we can do, if we come over to the console, and remember when you open up a new console in Nitrous, you always have to uh, get into your... Uh, whatever directory you're using and so now we're actually in our app and what I want to do and I'll scroll up so we have some more room is look at our routes so we can do rake routes and when you do this this is a quick way to know exactly uh, which pages you have and which routes you can use here uh, these prefixes on the left hand side this is how you know uh, what to enter in for your links so when we come over here to application uh, this has all this content right now this just goes to the home page and that's obviously not good because we want when you click about us to go to the about us page and that's very easy to do and all you have to do you can come down here and copy it or you can just type it in and so with the about us section just gonna get rid of root and you should have welcome underscore about underscore path and save that and come to the app hit refresh now when you click about us you can see it actually takes you to the about section which is really nice so let's do that for each one of these so for contact this is just gonna be uh, welcome contact for features, it's uh, you can see it's just welcome features, welcome. and obviously make sure that your spelling is always accurate with this, or else you're going to run into some error messages, and you'll uh, find out very quickly that you misspelled something, and it happens to the best of us. Uh, pricing, so we go welcome pricing, and uh, if you're wondering why you have to put this underscore path at the end. Uh, the reason for that is because there's actually a couple different options and uh, path will actually give a relative path meaning it will give this it will say slash welcome slash about and uh, it it works very well if you're trying to link within a site if you're trying to do something like grabbing a URL for a third-party site or you need the full URL for some reason or another, you could actually change any one of these to welcome about URL and it'll actually give the full URL. Uh, you don't really do that when you're doing routing though. Path's uh, a built-in feature that works beautifully for that. And so uh, this uh, this is usually the way that you'd want to have it set up. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and add a new one because we don't want invoices to actually be our homepage. Uh, we're going to be hiding that eventually so only authorized users can see it. Uh, for right now, we'll keep it so it can be accessed. And uh, we're going to take this and do... Let's see, if we come down to our routes, we can see that it's just invoices path. And we can keep home at root path, and we're going to switch that up here in a second. So now if I hit refresh, okay, and it looks like I probably did have a spelling mistake. Uh, hold on one second. We have welcome facts page. And let's see, 
Oh, see, I I warned you there was gonna be a spelling mistake in there somewhere. Hit save, hit refresh, and there you go. So uh, this is all working. Now if you click about us, it's, uh, it takes you to the same page. Contact, features, facts, pricing. Now when we click invoices, see, you see it takes us right there. Now if we click home, you'll notice it still is taking us back to the, uh, the invoice page, which is not something we want. And the way we're gonna fix that is we're gonna come to routes and instead of doing our route to invoices, now we're gonna switch it so the route is actually going to use this welcome slash index. So we'll do that, hit save, and now when we hit refresh, oh, sorry. You can't just dump that in, you actually have to do pound sign. Hit save, hit refresh, and there it's working. So. Uh, in case you're wondering why that is, uh, the pound sign stands for, uh, it, this is separating out the, uh, a method call, which index is actually a method call. If you click on controllers and then click on welcome, you'll see it's actually a built-in uh, method. Uh, about, contact, fact, pricing, features. They're actually, technically, they're all methods and, uh, there's a lot for these type of pages there's a lot of times you'll never even do anything they'll just stay very much like this uh, the invoicing ones um, if you click on that controller you'll see it has a lot more logic automatically built into it just by uh, you know, just by the rails um, scaffolding uh, generator but for this this is really all we need especially right now and so when you call a get request, which is what we did up here. Uh, we did a get welcome fact and uh, get welcome contact and so on and so forth. That just needed the relative path of the URL. However, the root is not a get request. This is saying, what do you want the home page to be? And so I can't, uh, as we found out, I can't just pass that a relative URL. I actually have to pass it the name of the controller the pound sign, which lets Rails know that, hey, the next thing I'm going to give is a method. And so here's a controller, pound sign, and then the method name, and then it works. If we wanted to switch this up for some reason and say about and hit save and refresh the home page, now the home page would actually be the about page. We don't want that, but that's showing you how that's uh, calling the method. So we'll hit save, hit refresh, and we're good to go. So this was very good. Uh, you now know how to create a fully functioning uh, Rails application and being able to incorporate navigation and things like that, which is very exciting. Uh, I actually have built a you know, static type of corporate websites with no more knowledge than uh, we just did with this. And it actually works very nicely. So you can build, you don't have to build a you know, incredibly powerful application with Rails. You can also use it to build a static business application uh, and use Rails instead of WordPress or you know something similar to that. Um, but now that we've done all this work, we really need to uh, add all this up to the Git repository for uh, source version management. So um, go down into the terminal and type in git status and it'll tell us all of the files that we've changed since the last time we pushed up to Git. So we have modified ones and then we have ones that we've added. And so we want to uh, first check to see which branch we're on, which it shows up here, but I usually just do it out of habit. So I do git branch and it says we're on the master. So that's good um, for this tutorial. Later on, I'm going to show you how to actually build out big features on branches uh, so that you're not playing around um, and living dangerously building things on the master branch. And I'll explain why uh, in a future episode. Uh, but all we have to do for this one is do git add and then do a space and a dot, and that adds all the files. So now if we do git status, you can see they're all green, and these have all been added. And then we do git commit dash m, and say uh, 
built built out navigation and added welcome controller and set root and then end that with a apostrophe hit return and then just do git push it's going to ask you for your username and password to github and that's all pushed up and now that that's pushed let's also push up to heroku just so we can uh, see it working live on the web so we're going to do git push heroku hit return And this just takes a few seconds. Pushing up to Roku takes longer than uh, pushing up to Git, if you hadn't noticed, mainly because it has to pre-compile assets and do a lot of different things like that. So uh, you can see right now, actually, if you're paying attention, it says uh, it's running the pre-compile. And as, you, as your applications get bigger and bigger, uh, one thing you need to be aware of, especially if you're using Heroku or really whatever you're using, uh, these pushes can take a very long time. <laughs> I know some uh, Rails applications that are so big that a Heroku push takes about 15 or 20 minutes. So it's just important to know uh, when you're scheduling your time that that can be the case. So. Uh, I'm not sure if, if this is going to work, mainly because I'm not sure if we've done any model work since last time we pushed to Heroku, so uh, this may throw an error. We'll see in a second here. Nope, that works, so that's neat. Um, we, we, if it would have thrown an error, uh, a Heroku run rake DB, DB migrate would have fixed it, So, um, but it's nice that this is all functioning for us. So if we click Home, that's working, About Us. Contact, features, facts, pricing, invoices, it's all working. So this is awesome. It's working uh, perfectly. So if you're following along, great job. I have another fun episode scheduled next. And what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be starting to make our application look good. <laughs> because right now it's hideously ugly. So uh, we need to make sure that this is something that you're going to be proud to show off to people. So we're going to integrate Twitter Bootstrap and show you how you can customize it and uh, so this application will start to look like a real website uh, here in the next episode so stay tuned